A web page is constructed by layering and combining multiple flex groups, similar to a cabinet with various compartments inside. Each layer has multiple boxes that are adjacent and do not overlap. For this design, for example, we can see it as a cabinet with two layers. In the upper layer, there are several compartments. In most cases, if we haven't make additional settings, the content are fluid and flexible, just like pliable clothes. Setting the mode of each box correctly is essential. Simply put, the size of the content is determined by its parent cell, the container. Click here we can adjust the size of the screen to the same as the design. Pro tip, when adjusting responsive behavior, adjusting from larger screen sizes to smaller ones can save you a lot of time, since the settings of larger sizes will be reflected in smaller sizes. Here, the size of the design refers to the size of your canvas in Figma. What does it mean by setting the mode of each box? We have two modes to choose from, fixed or flexible. If setting a box to flexible mode, it will expand to fill extra space or reduce its own space when the container has insufficient space. It is important to avoid setting every box as fixed. Doing so will result in the total width of the content exceeding the container's area on smaller screens, while failing to fill the container on larger screens. To ensure that the container fills the space when enlarged, it is recommended to set at least one box as flexible. Typically, the flexible setting is used for large blank spaces. As mentioned earlier, a web page comprises multiple layers of containers stacked together, so it's crucial to find the correct layer to adjust. To do this, you can use the keyboard directional keys. Click an object and press the left key to select the object of the upper level. You can see it shows some options for you to adjust the settings for allocating inner space. Let's demonstrate how. Click here to switch between fixed and flexible modes. By default, the value is set to shrink, which means the size will only shrink and not expand. Dragging this control point can adjust the width. Clicking the eye icon will switch to hidden mode, toggle the visibility of the element. When creating a header, we usually don't want to show the menu on smaller screens. This can be accomplished by hiding the container that contains the menu. Clicking on the scissor icon on the blank space can create a new line. Clicking here, or using the left directional key, will take you to the upper level so that you can adjust the outer space allocation. What we just discussed are about inner space allocation, and now let's talk about outer space allocation. Outer space is related to the space distribution between the box itself and the upper level. You can eliminate or create space by dragging the control point or using this menu to finish setting quickly. These are left aligned, center aligned, and right aligned settings, helping you determine the position of the entire container easily. This one fills up the spaces on the both sides. The most special one is unshrink width. This setting can keep its width unchanged when the screen is scaled down and only the size of the spaces on both sides will be affected. When the screen size is too small to contain the element, just switch the setting to full width. Next, we have some additional tips for you. 1. All control points can be dragged and what you see is what you get. When dragging, holding the Alt or Option key on macOS can adjust left and right sides together. 2. When selecting object, PXCode has different features for you to choose in the upper right corner. For texts, you can adjust font size and alignment. For images, you can adjust the whether the image should fill the space and whether it scales proportionally when the size changes. Finally, let's summarize today's tutorial. Two key points, use left slash right arrow keys to find the correct level. Set the correct mode, fixed or fill, for each flex cell, cabinet compartment.